guys, look at you here. And this is Oodles of Noodles, a series dedicated to all things noodles. Today we'll be making carrot button noodles. <gasps> uh, look at you, that combo sounds delicious. Yes, it is. Inspired by Delicious Day on YouTube. They're basically chewy carrot flavor noodles in a tiny button shape. We'll be tossing it in a simple garlic soy noodle sauce. So stick around till the end and we can nibble on it together. Now let's get carrot button noodling. I'm on my way to Miku's self-defense class. I heard it had good reviews on Google. And huh? Why are there carrots? Self-defense. We're using it as a self-defense weapon? Yes. According to Miku, keep two carrots in your pockets at all times. And if you encounter a bad guy, just offer them the carrots. They'll be confused and BAM! Poke their eyes out. They'll be blinded by the carrots and run away crying for their mommy. Oh, that's terrifying. I like it. I have here three medium-sized carrots, which is around 250 grams. Peel and chop them into chunks. And I know you have a big bag of carrots sitting in the back of your fridge, so you better be peeling and chopping with me. These carrot chunks should be around the thickness of half of your left pinky, and we'll need to soften it up. So bring water to a boil, transfer the carrots into the jacuzzi, add half a teaspoon of salt, and let it boil for 15 minutes. The water will be dyed a lovely orange, and they should be soft enough so that a chopstick can poke through it. So these are perfect. Ring, ring, ring. Ah, hurry. Carefully transfer the hot carrots into a blender, waiting five minutes for the carrots to cool down, or else there'll be a carrot explosion in your kitchen. If it becomes too thick to blend, I like to add three tablespoons of water to soften it up. Blend it until it becomes a smooth carrot puree or carrot baby food, uh, which I never had as a snack before because uh, those are for babies and not for a carrot loving fanatic like myself. And if you don't have a blender, you can also puree these carrots by hand with a mortar and pestle, but you can't mash them with a fork because you'll end up with carrot crumbs. Carrots are definitely tougher to mash than boiled potatoes. So if you do have a blender or a food processor of sorts, feel free to use it. Your muscles will thank you later. Transfer the carrot puree to a bowl. You'll need some potato or cornstarch. I like using potato because it's a little chewier than cornstarch. Plop in one and a third cup of starch and use a spatula to mix the starch into the carrot puree. You shouldn't need to add any water since we already added some into the blender. But if your dough is dry, then feel free to add hot water one tablespoon at a time. After a few minutes of kneading, you should reach the same dough consistency I have. The dough is smooth, but has a wet and crumbly texture. And when you poke its belly, there shouldn't be any residual belly on your finger. I like to have a bowl of water handy. Grab a pinch of the dough. It should be around half a teaspoon. Wet your left palm and squish it around in your hands to rehydrate it a little. Slowly and gently roll the dough into a sphere and take the smallest finger on your hand. I don't know about you, but mine's the pinky. And slowly indent the center of the sphere with your pinky all the way down. If your button has any cracks, just simply dab a little water onto the crack and it'll magically seal up. <gasps> but if you're too lazy to measure, then just grab enough dough to make around the size of a marble. Oh, and make sure that your pinky nails are well trimmed and flush with the meaty part of your finger. Sorry to all my long nailed manicured queens, or else you'll have a hole at the bottom of your carrot button. And during this time, make sure to always have a wet cloth covering the dough to prevent it from drying out. Once your carrot noodles are all buttoned up, bring some water to a rolling boil. Carefully plop your carrot button noodles into the jacuzzi, immediately stirring them to prevent any from sticking together. Add in a half teaspoon of salt 
and let it boil for around four to five minutes. Now the reason why I emphasize a rolling boil is because I've seen a few comments saying that their noodles in my potato noodle video always melt and disintegrate into the water. But stop! The only reason that could happen is if you place your noodles into the water when it's not at a rolling boil. Meaning it's like or heavy metal compared to a gentle boil which is like or soft rock. Hopefully my reenactment helped you. Anyways, let's check back on the noodles. So grab one and take a bite. If it's soft and has a nice chew, then you're good to go. I like to give them a quick dip into cold water. This is optional but makes them chewier and cools them down as it stops the noodles from cooking further. Transfer it into a bowl as we prepare our noodle sauce. Since we want to highlight the vibrant orange color and flavor of the carrots, my spasse chili oil noodle sauce would overpower those characteristics. So I find that a simple garlic soy sauce works perfectly for these chewy oompa loompas. Mince two cloves of garlic and plop it onto the noodles. Thinly slice some green onions, you know, just for a pop of green in the sea of orange, and shabam it onto the noodles. For the liquids, just regular soy sauce will do. One tablespoon of it. And to balance out the saltiness from the soy sauce, I like adding a tablespoon of Chinese black vinegar. To add a roasty, toasty flavor, I like using roasted sesame oil. It's optional, but use one teaspoon if you have it handy. Finally, to enhance the sweetness of the carrots, add in half a teaspoon of granulated sugar. And these carrot noodles are dinner with a show. So heat up two tablespoons of vegetable oil. And to check if it's hot enough, stick a chopstick in. And if it's hot enough, you'll see bubbles forming around it. Carefully pour the hot oil onto the garlic and green onions, watching it sizzle and tingle all your senses. Then we're gonna do a little mixy mix. We're gonna do a little mixy mix. Top it off with a teaspoon of roasted sesame seeds. And there we have it, chewy carrot button noodles. And I'm really eager to turn my skin orange. So let's dig in. All right, so this is the finished product. And I'm super excited. Look at that, gorgeous, just like you. All right, cheers. First bites for you, mm, nom nom nom. Mm. When you first take a bite, you get hit with that super chewy carrot noodle. Then you chew a little and you can taste that hint of carrot flavor. A nice slight sweetness from it. And of course, the soy garlic noodle sauce is amazing. The scallion gives a refreshing crisp it needs. Texture, very similar to dokboki mixed with boba. And we can't forget the addition of that sesame oil gives a nice roasty and toasty flavor. The shape of these little button noodles sort of remind me of those rubber poppers. You know, the ones you get in loop bags. You're like, Poof! and then you put it on the ground and it's like, boo! Yeah. Too bad you can't. I dropped it. Too bad you can't pop them, but you can pop them in your mouth. All right, so this gets look at you stamp of approval. Psh! And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post once a week. And I'll see you guys next time. Happy New Year.